Went up down a short side, pushed towards the sideline, throws the ball back in field, and the Dragons were able to fall on it. That gave them possession and an early opportunity. But good backline play there from the Dragons, forcing an opportunity for this man, Cooper, to force his way across the line, but held up. They get the scrum feed on the attack straight away. The way with Simmons now for the line. This will be the first try. We haven't had to wait long for this one. Pete Simmons scores the try for the Dragons. Two minutes gone on the clock, and the minor premiers are on the board via their fullback. Coincidentally, their player of the year in first division. Yeah, denied on the left-hand side of the field, and they go to the right-hand side of the field. So we see on replay as we freeze it there, a second man play has enabled the defence to get cramped up in the middle here, and around the outside goes Reece Simmons to find some space on the outside. As play continues off the second man play, he gets on the outside of the centre there for Parramatta and forces his way over in the corner. So good start for the Dragons. Denied on the left, but pick up their try on the right. Well, this Reece Simmons has got plenty of pace now. I remember the game last week, excuse me, when they played Newcastle, they, they won the game because they changed their hand and spread the, the ball wide in those dying minutes of the, the golden point. And this young man played a great game. But it looks like straight away in this game, their first set, the first time they got the ball, they looked to spread it wide. And his first set again, they spread it wide beautifully to the uh, right-hand side. And what a good try. He's a good find him. He's only 21 years of age. In fact, a West Magpies junior. And he's had a tremendous year. And at this level... He's another one of those versatile players too. He can play in the halves. He can play half or five eight. Found a home here at fullback in the first division team. It's a great confident booster for him in this grand final. And Coral, the hooker from the sideline, unsuccessful, but the Dragons are underway. The first division grand final. It is four nil over the years. How are we doing? Miles back. Could you mind signing us an autograph? Could you make it out to my new mates? <laughs> Excuse me, mate, could you send it to the bar? I'd like to give a round to his new, to my new mates. Give <laughs> that man a new. We welcome you back to Stadium Australia and a little bit of controversy from the restart of play. Trindle the halfback, very deep. And I think correctly ruled that it was taken over the dead ball line. The halfback Simon left from the in-goal area, landed over the dead ball line. I think the officials have got it 100% right. Line drop out for the Dragons. So back will come Parramatta, Jason Kalis. 35 metres away. And in this run of the grand final, this last six weeks, this Parramatta side has averaged 44 points a game. They can score some points. Tonga, young centre, 18 years of age, 20 metres away from the Dragons line. Now Del Santo. The right with Ryan and then Sullivan. Only 10 metres away and now the Dragons, the first time they feel the pinch. There's Trindle with a step, just a metre away from the line. Bound for South Sydney next year, the number seven, Wozniak. Wozniak gets in goal for Parramatta. Well, at least his legs do, but not the ball. And in fact, now the changeover, so great work by the St George Illawarra defence. Yeah, as is the case with First Division this year, high-scoring games, you can see here that the, the offences from both teams are working early in this contest. The Dragons held up over the line. Here's Wozniak trying to get out from dummy half. He actually forces his way into the end goal, but it was the last tackle and a changeover to the Dragons. Back in possession, just short of the 30. And working to centre field with Justin Smith. The clashes between these two sides this year. Parramatta won in Wollongong, and the Dragons won at Parramatta. They're both pretty tight affairs. Dragons up here by 4-0. Try to their fullback early. Wade Forrester. Former Shark, who has played lower grade grand finals, going way back to 94 and 96. He won both of them. Goral, 45 metres out from the Parramatta line, getting that kick. Right for the corner, no play the ball for Wade McKinnon. And they will have gained a lot of confidence from this start, posting points, then defending their own line, and then a very competent set of six to follow. Yeah, that's that's the kick that they needed. Interesting start for a grand final now, not, not traditional. There was no real big hits. Both teams, when they got the ball, nearly got an opportunity to score. They really need to settle down, as Gus said before, particularly Parramatta have scored some big scores in the attacking department, but really need to concentrate on their defence and get that in order first. Scrum win 10 metres out from their own line and McKinnon in 
fact, the leading try scorer in first division this year, the number one. And another player that's bound for the Bunnies next year. Wozniak tackled on the 20. He will be headed off to Balmain next year. And Sullivan gets another hit up. Almost straight over the top there of Forrester. He's such a young athlete, Sullivan. He'd be six foot four and the old money around 15, 16 stone. Yeah, he's a wonderful build, isn't he, for second row? And he's got a big future too. And now Boyd offloading. McKinnon with the ball. And headed back to centre field and contained there by the lock forward Smith. And that is tackle number five for Parramatta. Trindle will kick from five metres inside his own half. With Lalota out, they've brought Hooky into the centres. And Jason Kent is playing on the left wing. A little reshuffle in the back line. And now the try scorer. Making good metres at a dummy half. Made 15, back to the 40 metre line. Laurel, or rather it was Clark who got into dummy half and now linking up with Bobbin. We saw him in first grade late in the season. Just the one appearance. Stapleton with the ball. Good charge there, got past Kalis. And all of a sudden the Dragons are 40 metres away from the Parramatta line. And working left, Forrester running back towards the markers. And Goral now with the ball. There's a, a little opportunity on the right side for Hooky. And back in field. Fifth tackle for the Dragons, 25 metres out. Comes back for Meads. From 20 out. The kick looks strong off the boot. Not a good one from the 5'8 for the Dragons. And Parramatta will have the 20 metre restart. He's ripping for a restart of play there, a line dropout, a good kick, would have done that. Or another one up in the air to put some pressure on in the opening moments of a grand final, probably the better option. The kick it way out the back, let the pressure off for Parramatta. And as Paul Harrigan said, both these sides have just settled into playing a game of football. Not a traditional start to a grand final with a softening up period at all and very keen to move the ball both sides. He's back towards halfway and Del Santo back in field for Sullivan. Sullivan, good metres again. Ball has been knocked out of the hands, but more accidental than anything. Ran from behind him, knock off. Shane Flanagan, the Parramatta coach. In his playing career, played first grade with the Dragons and the Magpies and also the Eels. And I've got no dramas with the ball flicked out there of Sullivan. He was looking to offload. This from five metres inside the Dragons half and Meads working the scrum that time and breaking from it is Smith he's already in the top the top 25 squad for first grade next year Justin Smith now Goral and left with Fitzgerald taken there by Trindle Goral again to the left linking up there with Cooper got away from Trindle and Cooper is now 31 metres from the line Meads in a dummy half and away with Forrester back with Meads they're starting to cause some problems here. Bobbin is with the ball. And now Simmons, the fullback. 25 metres out, but the offloads are starting to happen for the Dragons as Goral to the halfback. Simon, little kick from Simon, putting some pressure there on Ella. He was able to get back, but no panic, but certainly a lot of pressure on Parramatta. You see the way these two first division sides play, the Dragons and, and the Eels, they play very, very similar to their first grade team. Same sort of structure, same patterns, same types of plays emerging. These trends are passed down by the top grade coach right through the junior grades. That way when players come from first division into first grade, they fit into the system very easily. We see a penalty here now to Parramatta. But both these sides, not unlike their senior counterparts. Well, Wade Forrest to penalise for a strip on Anthony Boyd. He got up with an innocent look. That's one of those 50-50 penalties. It's hard to tell. I, I still think personally that in the game of rugby league, you must still hang on to the ball. It's just you know, the slightest tap just can't knock it out. There's some responsibility from the attacking team. Parramatta 40 metres from the Dragons line. And coming back across with Sullivan. Well, he certainly made a, a great start to this game, Sullivan. He's attracting two and three defenders every time. Del Santo left with Ryan. He's the brother of Andrew Ryan. So a big day for that family. Now 25 metres from the line and Tonga gets a bit of footwork happening. Inside the Dragons 20, Del Santo and Wheeler was first receiver along for Trindle. He had Wozniak on his outside, Trindle keeps it alive. Parramatta with McKinnon. Five metres from the Dragons line, McKinnon. It takes three to get him to ground. 
looking for their first points, Del Santo. Long ball at a dummy half for Kalis. He keeps it going for Tonga. Tonga has lost the ball, and the Dragons are back in possession. And the hands go on the heads there from some of the younger Eels players. An opportunity lost. Tonga looks certain to score in the corner just through his sheer size and strength. There's some good football there from the Parramatta team. He's a good player, this player. Big and strong. Good tackle over the top there. Looks by Lee Hooky that was able to force the ball out. But it was an opportunity lost there for Parramatta. Yeah, that was good defence by Lee Hooky. Showed a lot of experience there. He has played a fair bit of first grade. Good communication defence there. Slid very well. Saved a try. It's almost back to their 40. That young bloke Tonga started the year on the bench for the under-18s at Parramatta. So he'll certainly be winning probably the most improved award. And Parramatta with Ella. Speedy left winger for this eel side, the nephew of Steve. Inside their 30. Now Donald comes in for a touch. And upended in the tackle there of Fitzgerald. Out of dummy half again with Ella. Sort of halfway and Scott Getty's ready to come into the action. Yet another player bound for South Sydney next season. And to come into the action for the St George Illawarra side. Jason Kalis spinning in the tackle there of Fitzgerald. 35 minutes from the Dragons line. This is tackle five. And Trindle's kick looking for some open space. It's well handled at the back by Clark. And he turned around. It looked like he was a little off balance, but he recovered well. A good set of six there by Parramatta. The kick wasn't too great at the end. It went straight down the throat. There's a cut there on the head, but uh, straight down the throat of the uh, Sir George Dragon player. But good go forward. That's what they need. Three or four good go forward sets in a row will make the difference and set that platform that Parramatta need. Wade Forrester, the player we saw going off to the bench as Geddes gets his first touch. I understand Parramatta were pretty keen to sign him as well. And South's got his signature now. Fitzgerald straight through the centre for Cooper. 30 metres from the Parramatta line. And around the legs was Del Santo. Mid tackle. And he's a dummy half. High ball there for the 5-8 metres. He's the one steering with a kicking game. Gets a good bounce for Simon. Then it comes wide for Hookie. And Hookie will get there for the Dragons. Their second try. A little bit of luck in it. They will take that with open arms. It is 8 nils from George Illawarra. Yeah, it's all right to say it was lucky, but you've got to be there to take advantage of the luck. And this time Meads, again, with players outside, look for the short little kick. Ricochets off a Parramatta player and very, very quickly picked up there uh, by Mark Simon. Turns it on to Hooky and just with experience and strength, he's able to get away from Wade McKinnon and put the ball down in the corner. The ball actually comes off Andrew Boyd, Parramatta second row, picked up quickly by Simon, the younger bot, rather, of John Simon. Quickly out to Lee Hooky. Now, here's first grade experience and strength. You can see the difference in size between a player that has trained for first grade for a long period of time and youngsters that are on the way up. And a good palm off there. He's able to get in in the corner. Good try to Lee Hooky. Yeah, the Dragons so far, every time they've got the ball, they've looked ball patent in attack. And Lee Hooky, as I said before, done a great tackle, showed his experience and done it again. Mark Simon, good effort for him. Johnny on the spot, picked that ball up. Chief, when that bloke first came into first grade, Lee Hooky, the Rabbitohs, Craig Coleman, was saying, look, the best South Sydney junior they'd had in five or ten years. And I guess you could say he hasn't quite lived up to his potential yet, but that potential is still there, as we've just seen. Yeah, that's right. He would be disappointed uh, you know, playing in a first division grand final, but, uh, well, it's still there for him and certainly helped they win today. Over to Aaron Gold. Last year he was captain of the New South Wales under-19s. He was signed up to be in the top 25 squad this year, and the way things happened, Mark Riddell got ahead of him. Aaron Goral had an injury to start the year. And he finds himself in the first division grand final. His second kick of the day also unsuccessful. But the Dragons lead by eight points to the other side of line, Mark Point. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Like, like Gus alluded to before, both these teams play like their first grade counterparts, and the Dragons, they get a bit of open, open field to play and throw the ball around. They're extremely dangerous, racking up. 10 points already. The other thing that I can agree with you guys on is the talk down here on the field is extremely quiet. It's almost like these two young teams are just trying to, I suppose, soak up the momentum or soak up the atmosphere down here because it is very quiet. Wozniak has gone to the bench and Chad Robinson, who has been part of the first grade squad all week, is now out there for Parramatta. And Geddes is returning for St George Illawarra. I think it's 
been a good touch from Brian Smith. He was keen that every player would get a game today. He wasn't going to have any player just sitting around hoping they get a start. So Robinson and Irvine find themselves playing first division. The interesting comment there from Mark Coyne, usually I find when, you, when you're quiet or a team's quiet, you're a little bit overawed. Like you're a bit within yourself, you've been thinking about the game too much. And this rate makes me reflect to tonight's game with first grade. These guys are going to be there all day thinking about the game. It's important that your, your presence of mind is there and you're calm and you're excited about it. You play your normal type of game. Dragons are on halfway. It is going according to plan for the minor premier so far. Simon's kick, he was under some harassment there from Kalis. He still managed to find the line mark, Simon. He's done the job. It was a good kick under a bit of pressure there and uh, again forces this Parramatta team back into their own quarter. One of those little banana kicks off the outside of the right foot. Gets the ball heading towards the sideline with a little bit of fade. A nice friendly bounce now. Runs towards the, the sideline away from Wade McKinnon, the Parramatta fullback. A little bit like one of my seven irons. Don't go early. 10 metres out from the line. Matter return, Del Santo. Could so easily be playing in the opposite side. He is an Illawarra junior, the hooker for Parramatta. And back in field for Robinson. Position half, big stat in favour of the Dragons here. And what's more, they've converted it into two four-pointers. Exactly what they would want. Snuff out the charge at Parramatta early if they can. Robinson working left there with Boyd. Got through one tackle. That was Bobbin's attempt. Left him on his backside. He's a strong run, ball runner, Boyd, too. He looks a likely candidate for first grade in the future. And Strindle puts a high one up here for the Dragons' back end. Spiralling kick, and Simmons hasn't got to it. Possible offside there it is. But, in fact, it's the Parramatta way that has gone against. And, in fact, he may have even said mid-air tackle there. He had a, a, a few options there, referee Lawrence. Well, there are Parramatta players in front of Craig Trindle as he kicks the ball. Whether or not Trindle gets through in, in time enough to put them onside, he doesn't. And the referee 100% right here. Simmons gets up high, attended by Tonga. The ball comes forward. He's picked up by a teammate. Andrew was saying it could have been a penalty to Parramatta, but there were Parramatta players in front of the kicker there. Gettys returns for St. George Illawarra. And there 40. Simon, the half doing well, and there is second half of that combination, Meads getting the ball on the bounce, has signed with Parramatta for next year, now carrying forward is Donnelly, oh, one off the bench, and then with Goral working blindside with Fitzgerald, almost a goose step there from Jamie Fitzgerald, he's kept that up his sleeve until grand final day, with Giddies picked up on the tackle, driven sideways by Boyd. His reputation is growing in this match. Last tackle with Simon. Kick has got a little work here for McKinnon. Not a good bounce. And now McKinnon has put it down. He got a dreadful first bounce. He got a shocking second bounce. And St George Illawarra will get a scrum feed. As a football will do. Just turned on a sixpence there. And McKinnon with players bearing down on him. Couldn't get a handle on the football. This sets up a terrific opportunity for the Dragons now. Right in front of the post on the first tackle. From the last scrum win here in this position, they were able to score in the right-hand corner. See which way they go this time. Coach Flanagan not impressed. Uh, an appeal to the rugby league gods, and now the Dragons come up with an error. Knocked back was the call at first from Rod Lawrence, and then there's been time off ruled here. I think we've got an injury. I don't know whether or not he's got an accidental poke in the eye, but he seems to be holding his, his head in that region. The trainer now will attend to it. Might have been an accidental poke in the eye. Andrew Meads. The ball goes over the back of his head. He picks it up. Trindle comes across. So you can't see much happening there. So play on now for the Dragons with Geddes. He is only five metres from the line. Paramatta Junior will play it. Goral working left with Donnelly. Not running from any great distance. A little flat-footed, in fact, when he got the ball. Goral again. And with Geddes. So it's three-man rugby league at the moment. And they choose to use some of their teammates at the moment. Goral, they work left with Simmons. Simmons, who scored the first try. That is too easy. Trindle rushed up out of the line. And Simmons, there was a massive corridor. He marched through. 
for the Dragons' third try. And as I said, when he scored his first try from fullback, he is a versatile player. He can play in the halves. And on this occasion, playing at first receiver straight off the dummy half, was able to feign wide. There were plenty of numbers out on the edges. Parramatta defence overread the situation. And again, in one of these typical second-man type plays, he'll shape to the outside. Good, sharp little leftward step. Gets on the back of the inside of Trindle, the halfback for the Parramatta team. In fact, pretty soft in the end there for the Dragons. He has the ability to play at first receiver, set up supports, as well as playing his normal fullback role. You can't, uh, that, that's a great individual effort, but I can't look past the Parramatta defence there. Very poor. No communication. They only had four guys on that right-hand side. And you can see what inside players there looking, blowing up at someone else that someone wasn't there. But that was his job to cover that. They've got to really work on that one. Well, this, this game could really get away in the first half. Well, Chief, it is now 12-0. And Doral is looking for his first success of the day with a boot. From 12 metres out. And he's 20 metres in from touch. And goal for the 14 0 lead. He posts the two points. Ryan Johnson, their coach, watches on. 14 0. We will break the Dragons over the years. Try one at a time. <laughs> First Division Grand Final, the big day 2001. It is the minor premiers in this grade, the Dragons, who are going along so nicely. 14-0. Well, that will be the story later today when the minor premiers Parramatta take on Newcastle. Dragons back to halfway. They have posted three first half tries. Their bench players have added some impact. That is Donnelly with the ball. And last tackle. Simon. Been kicking to the same corner every time. This time McKinnon is across there. And they're happy to have the ball back in their hands. It's been a while. I think the difference between the two sides in this opening 20 minutes has just been the physical strength of the Dragons. When you looked at the two starting lineups, there were seven Dragons players, including five forwards, who have played first grade this year, up against only three from Parramatta. Now Smith, Fitzgerald, Bobbin, Forrester, Stapleton, Cooper and Hooky all had years of experience, played in the top grade against the big strong players and it's just telling out there in the opening part of this game. Parramatta have added to that first grade strength as Jason Kalis goes to the bench. Daniel Irvine is now out there. So too is Mitchell Sargent who's signed with Melbourne for next season. Sullivan standing wide here for the Eels. Gets inside the Dragons half. On tackle number five, Trindle. This is the last play for them. The centre, Hal Penny gets his first touch. And his pass back inside is cut off by Cooper. So no result in the last lay there for Parramatta. It was bad luck. It was good work by Trindle. He had a little investigation down the short side on the last tackle. Created a little bit of space. But Hal Penny just couldn't get the pass away to his winger. Had to look back inside. Had to keep it alive. It was the last tackle. And the Dragons come up with the ball again. Our set man just playing the ball now. Jamie Fitzgerald, like a lot of players on both clubs, leaving at the end of the year to get new opportunities. And he impressed me last week when they beat Newcastle. He's going all right today. You signed him up at South there. What type of player is he? I've watched him for some time, Paul. He was a, he was a lower grade captain at North Sydney Bears for some years. Uh, he came across to the Dragons. He's had a good taste of first grade. He can play in the back row and he can also play a little bit of 5-8 because he has got great skill as well. And I've been very impressed with his improvement in defence over the last couple of years. And you now he's only a shandy off a regular first grade in any club. It'll be a valuable acquisition for uh, South Sydney next year. Another kick from the Dragons to that nor'eastern corner they're basically they've basically taken scott donald out of the play he's just not seeing the ball at all all the kicking has been to ella's wing and that time was a little strong and touching goal as now Parramatta bring it back tonga this 18 year old to halfway collected there by simon Parramatta needing to score next now 14 nil nice ball there from wheeler attacking the blind side with boyd back in field for bobbin dragons have the ball second intercept and again they created a little bit of space down the short side but the inside pass has been picked up by the Dragons cover defence but 
No doubt Parramatta will keep exploring in that area. They are troubling them around the marker area, but they've got to control the ball to put some pressure on the Dragons. Now, Meads has got the head bandage on, and Cooper's got some room to move. There was a Parramatta training, uh, trainer forced into top gear to get off the field and out of Cooper's way there. Now Meads, in with a lock forward Smith. Outside defenders have come up, but not able to prevent the offload. Fitzgerald through the centre, 25 away, last tackle Dragons. Again, they are in the attacking zone. Meads for Goral. Away from Trindle. Goral now needs support. Aaron Goral. There comes the pass. And Jason Kent scores try number four. Well, this is just developing into a very one-sided contest. It is 18-0. And Goral on tackle five. Well, he shouldn't have been able to do that. And here's the turnover at the other end of the field where Wheeler went down the short side, popped it back in field, and it was intercepted there by the Dragons back rower Andrew Bobbin as the play came to the left-hand side of the field. And Goral, you were saying earlier that Mark Riddell had just beat him for a first-grade spot earlier in the year. He showed his experience there. The pass wasn't on at first, was able to dummy step, and with strength, force his way through the middle of the ruck. And then a very selective pass at the end. This is good football. He actually holds it up. You'll see that there's players in between he and the winger will throw the ball across the top and finds an outstretched arm there. A good try there to the Dragons. There's the bench very happy. We said at the start, it was a suspect start to this game, I thought, defensively. A little bit quiet there. Maybe they're overawed, but this Parramatta team certainly got to work on their defence. Young goal, he's a great player. Great set-up play there, but... Defensively, the Parramatta, as I said a few times now, that's all they've got to work on. Just concentrate on their defence to get the ball. And let's back over to the man who set up the try. As I understand it, Aaron Goral was in the Dragons' top 25 squad at the start of the year, and Riddell was outside of that, but got his opportunity. Nathan Brown hurt in the trials. Goral was hurt on the same night, and Riddell, from there on, never missed a game. And strangely enough, both goal kickers, Goral, none out of two so far, but there have been wide efforts. This one from the sideline looks a lot better. And that is perfect from the number nine. He played the major part in the try. He has now converted Mark Coyne, 20-0 the Dragons. Yeah, once again, the Dragons making the Eels pay for that, that silly unforced error. What they've got to do, the Paramount Eels, get back in this game is try and get to the end of their sets. At the moment, they haven't really got to their fifth tackle kicks. They've really got to address that, try and control the ball and make the Dragons do some defensive work. I'm just thinking, we had a first division grand final just like this last year, Penrith established a massive lead against the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs coached by Terry Lamb chased them down and emerged as first division premiers Parramatta are going to have to do the same well just in defense those last two, two tries something in common with both of them is one man came out of the line twice and pretty well pulled the tries that was Frank Trindle he's got to watch that he's got to stay in his line and make sure he doesn't come up needs us with it for the Dragons and they're mating, making plenty of ground now already to halfway and with the ball as Geddes good defence but there's not enough of it from Parramatta it's only coming in spurts the, the physical stuff Goral trying his luck with a centre field bomb, McKinnon's got it covered and Parramatta back in possession still plenty of time in this first half for Parramatta to get the comeback underway Donald is with it my memory only his second touch of the ball and with it is Willie Tonga. Now at the moment, they're just being stood over by this Dragons team. We pointed to the amount of experience they've got there. And with experience comes size and strength. And a lot of these young Parramatta players are on the way up. They've got another couple of off-seasons of preparation in the gym before they get to that level. The Dragons at the moment just manhandling them. Every little wrestle, every little tussle is going the way of the red and whites. Daniel Irvine. Infield with Trindle. There's a little bit of hope more than real management in the kick. Well, it went straight through the, the clutches of Leo Clark and now headed for the sideline. That's dangerous. Scooped up there by Ryan. But the touch judge had said that Clark was already over the sideline. Parramatta will get a scrum feed. I don't want him fielding it long on. Leo Clark. Uh, a bit tough there, Bossy. It was a high swirling kick there from Trindle and wasn't easy. But good work there by Ella who pulled him towards the sideline, got his foot over the sideline. He's going to win some tidy possession here for Parramatta, who really haven't had the ball down at this end of the field too much at all. They need to come up with points here, get themselves back into the contest, get a bit of confidence happening. They have got good strike players. Look for Trindle. Hello? Look for McKinnon. They're the ones that can turn the game. 
Well, here is McKinnon. For Trindle, standing wide, putting a step there on Meads. They're only 15 metres away. They trail by 20 points to nil. To the right with Sullivan. Trying to get something started now. Sullivan's lost the ball. Is able to tap it back. The ball was stripped. Penalty Parramatta. And they will take the tap. McKinnon. Dragons work back the 10. And as Cooper makes the tackle. They've got a full set to work with here. Only five metres from the line. Irvine. And across with Trindle. Outside men come up. Inside for Wheeler, the captain. Wheeler's only three metres from the line. Three in the tackle. Irvine, there is the opportunity of an overlap on this left side. Trindle runs at Simmons. And Irvine back in field. Sargent. And Mitchell Sargent this time taking on the defence. Takes on the upright. Sargent has got Palmetto's first try. They're on the board. It's 20 points to four. And a nice confidence builder here for the Parramatta side. They haven't had much ball at this end of the field. But good work here from Irvine. The first grader, he's came on. Saw there was an opportunity underneath the post. This fellow, number 15, Mark Sargent, shows good strength, good perseverance, good commitment. Kept driving. A lot of players hanging around. Reaches out, puts it down under the black dot. We have no video referee in first division. We do have in-goal touch judges. He was right on the spot. He got that down. No problem. Parramatta get their first points and that's vital to them. Well, it's not a pretty try, but it's a try. And you can tell Parramatta are still a little bit out of whack with their attack, but nonetheless, go forward, got them over the line and it's exactly what they need. Got a feel for Daniel Irvine there in the hook and roll. He uh, has a fair chance of playing in the first grade grand final. Got pushed down, you would think, to the reserve grade side. He goes a kick now from Trindle. That's successful. Converted try to Parramatta, 20 points to six. Mark Coyne, sideline. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Probably the very first mistake that the uh, Dragons have made in this half. I think it was uh, the, set, the winger out there, Leo Clark. He's put his foot in the touch on that. It was a pretty poor kick by, by the Eels, but he put his foot in the touch. And a great run by Mitchell Sargent, a la, I suppose, uh, that, that front row, Steve Jackson, for the Canberra try a few years ago. So it was a great work by Mitchell Sargent there. And as I was just saying before with Irvine there, the fact that uh, you'd think he'd start in reserve grade, but he's on the bench again. Must be a little bit disappointing for him. Well, I think the coach... Shane Flanagan, he didn't want to disappoint Paul DeSanto, who had been in the starting side for the last few weeks. And you know, part of the first grade squad. So he left Del Santo as a, as a starting man. And Irvine getting plenty of game time. In fact, probably by full time, will have had more than Del Santo. And the try scorer is back with it. Sargent has to find himself a house down in Melbourne to live in next year. And Ryan works left. Another try before half-time will certainly help the cause for Parramatta. During the course of the season, this Parramatta team has scored a lot of points and can score points quickly. Not afraid to put them back-to-back, -back and this penalty will help them. Good field position, 31 metres out with a set of six in front of them. And here go the Eels, and Sargent gets another touch. Running at Forrester. 25 metres from the line. Parramatta looking to claw their way back. Kalis gets inside the 20. Perhaps it's the Dragons who are tiring a little here. As it goes left with Ryan. Keeps it going along for Tonga. He develop into a man mountain, this Willie Tonga at 18 years of age. He's already imposing. Parramatta now just two metres from the line. Irvine from the play the ball from Robinson for Ryan. Now Trindle, 10 metres out. Inside ball for Kalis. Not able to offload. Smith had him in the tackle. Five away from the line. Ryan blindside. Trindle tries to duck low. Gets it back for Donald. Donald keeps it alive there. Wheeler. Flat ball. Batted over the top by Irvine. Still with Parramatta. And that is the last in a changeover. Oh, great tackle there by Lee Hookie. It was a tackle that had to be made. If he was able to unload that ball there, Anthony Boyd, there was plenty of troops on the outside and only one defender to beat. But Hookie came up on the far side of the field. Came up and in. We saw down the right-hand side of the field. Trindle get away. A miraculous ball. Donald throws it in field. And a bit of a bat on here. Over the top. Now, if Hookie doesn't make this tackle, look at the numbers out there that have been two on one with the winger. But he was able to stop the ball, gather it up, and a turnover for his team. Dragons now back five metres inside their own half. And Cooper with the ball. Fitzgerald. It was Stapleton. Puts a little swerve when he got to Sargent. 
Last tackle here for the Dragons. Goral away for Simon. Again, he'll kick for that corner, turning Ella around. And Ella can do a little more than watch it go over the sideline. Harry's kicking game, Simon's been quite good today. Both the halves have put their foot to the ball. This was well weighted, just into the corner, slowing the game down. Not long left in this first half. In fact, only four minutes left on the clock. We've got a handy lead, 20 points to six. Nice camera angle on that last replay here from up and high in the grandstand. We'll get plenty of use out of that in the first grade tonight. Gus, just looking at a few of the stats, you said that uh, the points here, 20 points to six, Parramatta got, got a long way to go, but they can do it. Four or five weeks ago, they scored 60 points on Manly, uh, 48 on the Roosters, even 50 against Newcastle. So they can certainly score the points. The only fact is that uh, they let a few in. Even 50 against the Knights, Chief. Which is unusual, mate. The great defensive side of the Knights and attacking too. 25 metres out from their line, Parramatta with Kalis. I have to say, a reasonably quiet start from Kalis, but he's gone good the last five or ten. Now McKinnon. Short of the 40 metre line, Irvine. Well, they've stemmed the tide of points from the Dragons. They've got six of their own. And still three minutes to post another try before half time. Irvine's kick over the top. I think it was a very late call to his outside men. Ella may be quick. He's not the speed of light quick though. Now, I think he was hoping they'd be short in numbers when he came out of dummy half down that short side, but they numbered up well. The kick was really his secondary option. He was able to get it out over the sideline. When he went down that short side, as they have a number of times in this first half, he was hoping to outnumber them, realised he didn't have the numbers, so he got his foot to the ball. Bit of experience on display there. He's got an injured player down in the scrum. But it's a grand final. I mean, the second 40 minutes is a long 40 minutes. Tend to watch the clock a little bit when you've got a big lead. And if they do that and start to protect the lead, Paramount has got the potency to, to reel them in. And the Dragons with Fitzgerald. Well, certainly Parramatta have had their best passage of play the last 10 minutes. It's Gerald, quick hands there with Forrester. He's had one visit to the blood bin. On halfway now, Goral set up the most recent try for the Dragons in another bullocking run, really. Simmons for Stapleton. He has re-signed for a couple of years, so he'll be around in the first grade squad. Last tackle here for the Dragons. Simon, they will run it this time. Smith. Keeps it along for Hookie. Gets a fend on Ella. He was able to keep it alive and Clark. Not sure whether it hit him in the face or came off the chest or the hands. Either way, it's a changeover. It's hitting right in the face. It's a little, little bit late to get the Falcon of the Year, but that was a good one. Came straight back inside. Hit him in the face. They created an opportunity on the outside, running the ball on the last tackle. Parramatta numbered up well. the ball outside their 40. And McKinnon alive there with Irvine and now Robinson. That's alive. Needed one more support player there. McKinnon's been left behind here for Parramatta. Trindle, 40 metres out. He sends Donald on the chase. Here comes Donald. Doesn't get the bounce. And Simmons is back with the ball for the Dragons. And now the counter-attack for Cooper. And he's brought down by Trindle and lost the ball in the tackle. Exciting passage there from both teams. Yeah, good football from both teams. First of all, the kick by Trindle over the top for one of the quickest men in rugby league. Here's this camera shot again. Ball coming towards you. You can see that Donald nearly gets a handle on this one, just knocks it on. Good play here by Simmons, who picks it up and not happy with that. Wants to put his centre partner away, Cooper, on a good run downfield. Cooper nearly gets to the outside here on a long run, but loses the ball in the tackle. Trindle, the kicker, was the one back in cover defence. Good work. Parramatta get one last chance before half-time. And Boyd is with it. 30 metres away and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Irvine left with Ryan. He had Mitchell on his outside. First back in field. He's a, a nuggety 5'8", Tim Ryan. Now just outside the 20, Irvine for Trindle. Trindle 20 metres out, trying to weave his way right through the centre. Keeps it alive. There's an opportunity on the right. Kalis, quick hands. And it comes for Halpenny. Halpenny back for Kalis. Now still alive with Robinson, 15 metres from the line. And only five seconds remaining in the first half. Dragons having to hang on here. There will be no time for the play the ball. And I reckon the St George Illawarra camp, headed by their coach Brian Johnson, thankful for that. Parramatta coming home with a wet sail in this first half after the Dragons had scored the first four tries. 
So half time, first match on grand final day. 20 points to six. The Dragons over the Eels. We'll take a break and come back with a look back at the first 40 minutes of this first division decider. most wanted man, America tightens the noose. Also, reality TV as raw as it gets. It's so easy to die down here. Cops with cameras saving teenagers from drugs. Ray Martin with a success story from the streets of Vancouver. It's another day in paradise. And from soaps to superstar. Fists up. Come on, then. Natalie Imbruglia on life, loves... You get dumped. Yeah. And her secret weapon. I'm not weird. 60 minutes of the special time tonight, 6.30. With Telstra, the more numbers you put on one bill, the more you can save. Simply put your full service home phone, your mobile, or your internet together. To bring down your bill, call 132200 for details. the New South Wales Blues when they take on the Victorian Bush Rangers in the ING Cup this Sunday at Bankstown Oval. You both need a lift? Nah, mate. We're bogged. Show me you can use. For the first time ever, an Australian night at the proms. A promenade concert where you can choose to sit or wave the flag from the floor. An Australian night at the proms brings us all together to feel good about being Australian. Hosted by Bert Newton and starring Yvonne Kenny, David Campbell, Christina Anu, Gina Jeffries, Glenn Shorrock and more. An Australian night at the proms. One night only, Friday, October 5 at the Sydney Superdome. Park right at the venue. Book now at Ticketek. How are we doing? The mall's back. Mr. Cummings, would you mind signing us an autograph? Could you make it out to my new mates? <laughs> you mate, could you send it to the bar? I'd like to give a round to his new to my new mates. <laughs> that man and... It's half time in the first division grand final between St. George Illawarra and the Parramatta Eels. St. George in front uh, 20 to 6 over the Eels. They've scored four tries to one and goals to goal, two from four and Trindle one from one. Andrew Voss, uh, the Dragons, well, the Saints just got a real march on them and hit them very early. Well, we said in, co in commentary, just everything going according to plan for the minor premiers. They've come out of the boxes. They started beautifully, four straight tries and really dominated play. It's only been that last 10, 15 minutes coming up to half time that Parramatta have worked their way back into it. And it's no surprise that's come with the inclusion suddenly of, of Daniel Irvine, Chad Robinson, some of that first grade squad back into this side. They certainly look a lot better with those two players on. OK, Andrew, let's uh, check out that first try for the, uh, for the Dragons. They get the scrum feed on the attack straight away. The way we Simmons now for the line. This will be the first try. We haven't had to wait long for this one. Chris Simmons scores the try for the Dragons. Two minutes gone on the clock. 
Well, this try, the result of all the early pressure from the Dragons. Matt Cooper had been held up in the opposite corner, then straight from the scrum. Reece Simmons, he's a real good player, this fullback. He was the first division player of the year for the Dragons. He gets the first try, and just a, a great way to start. Suddenly the confidence up is up. Any nerves that were there are suddenly erased, and all of a sudden the pressure straight on to Parramatta. So the Dragons, the perfect start. This fullback, he, he sort of plays... I'm certainly not going to make a comparison with, with Darren Lockyer as a player in ability, but he certainly plays in the same sort of style. He can either go to first receiver, he's there at the back. As uh, Phil Gould mentioned in commentary, he's had a bit of experience at half 5'8". He's a very good player. And the good thing about it there, they didn't waste that good start because uh, pretty soon after, Hookie got in for the uh, Dragons' second try. We'll go to that right now. Half, high ball there for the 5'8 meets. He's the one steering with a kicking game. Gets a good bounce for Simon. Then it comes wide for Hookie. And Hookie will get there for the Dragons. Their second try. It wasn't so long ago that Lee Hookie was tagged one of the next big things in rugby league when he was back at South Sydney. And really the only thing that's held him up has been attitude. He's had a few problems off the field and most recently is only seven or eight days ago. He missed a training session, suddenly he was dropped from the First Division squad for last week's game against Newcastle. He gets a reprieve today with the injury to Shane Lalota. He comes into the side and he's had some great touches in this first half. He's a player with size, with speed, he's got a step, he's got good balance and here he's got deception as well on the Parramatta outside Manella and Wade McKinnon coming across couldn't make the tackle two out of two for the Dragons in the first ten minutes two tries you couldn't ask for any more than that yeah well it's a much different team to last week against Newcastle and then Simmons bag try number two we'll have a look at that now they choose to use some of their teammates at the moment Goral they work left with Simmons Simmons who scored the first try that is too easy you well, again, it's a case of weight of possession for the Dragons. have had plenty of ball inside the Parramatta half. And Simmons, this time in that first receiver role, a la Darren Lockyer coming in from fullback. Trindle rushed up off the line. And it was just a little too simple when you come to first grade, or rather first division grand final tries. This was just a gift for the number one. His second try in the match, and his confidence would be sky high. And at that stage, the conversion from out wide from Goral, 14-0. And you're just about hitting the panic button, if you're Parramatta. Well, they got one late in the piece. Maybe this will be the one that uh, fires them up for the second half. They can only hope so. Let's have a look at it. Again, they are in the attacking zone. Meads for Goral. Away from Trindle. Goral now needs support. Aaron Goral. There comes the pass. And Jason Kent scores try number four. Well, Kenny, we said before the game, the talent that we're going to see here, some of the players that will progress on to first grade, I've got no doubts that somewhere down the track we're going to see Aaron Goral playing at the, uh, at the later kickoff time because he's a real good player. He's a number nine, the modern-day hooker who can get at a dummy half run, bullocking run. He's a goal kicker as well. He's got some skills. He can fill in that first receiver role. And this was just outstanding work to link up with his outside men. One to make the bust then find his man on the outside and just a gift try to Jason Kent for the Dragons. A young bloke playing his first uh, grand final, he would love that moment. Well, as we said, the Eels really needed a try before uh, half time and they got it. And as I said, will this be the one that turns them around? Irvine, back in field, Sergeant. And Mitchell Sergeant this time, taking on the defence, takes on the upright. Sergeant has got Parramatta's first try. Well, it comes about with a man. He's wearing 25 on his back, Daniel Irvine, but his work has been so sharp since coming onto the field. And this bloke who scores the try, our Melbourne fans watching this will be looking for more of the same next year. He's already signed a contract with the Melbourne Storm for next season. It was a powerful burst to score the try. They followed up after that. They could have had another try coming up to halftime, Parramatta. So, yep, possibly the start of the comeback. 20 points to 6. Certainly looks a lot better than going into halftime with zero next to your name. OK, well, well, you'll be back the other side of the break with the second half of this uh, final and uh, on Wide World of Sports here at Stadium Australia. <laughs> Over 10,000 interviews. Nick, what happened? <laughs> the biggest stars. How talented are you? In a world full of questions, it's nice to hear some answers. Just private. I got baited. I can't believe I fell into it. Premiering 9.30 Monday. Meet the people making headlines. Russell Crowe, Tina Arena, Brian Brown. The Ray Martin Show, live. Premieres 9.30 Monday on 9. Hi, oh, Bill. Yeah, see you, mate. With
Telstra, the more numbers you put on one bill, the more you can save. Simply put your full service home phone, your mobile, or your internet together. To bring down your bill, call 132200 for details. How are we doing? From Rolls back. Would you mind signing us an autograph? Could you make it out to my new mate? <laughs> Excuse me, mate, could you send it to the bar? I'd like to give a round to his new, to my new mates. <laughs> it all began with this. Now, DCE presents Rod Live. Sydney Entertainment Centre, Thursday, January 31. Tickets are on sound now. Don't miss out. Putting together a system like this is complicated. For example, the problems we're having now could be the software. Or the platform. Or maybe the network. You never know until you test them together. And every e-business installation is like reinventing the wheel. So let's stop reinventing the wheel. Compact for e-business. The best partners. Complete solutions. Pre-configured, stress-tested, and ready to roll in less time than ever before. Even though Jeep Grand Cherokee is more refined and civilized than ever. Rest assured, it still hasn't lost its animal instincts. G'day. Yo, everybody! This is that Ozzy dude I was telling you all about. G'day, fellas. Can I get you a drink? Okay, to BYO. Go ahead, check it out. Man. Hey, easy, mate. Try one at a time. <laughs> NRL 2001 Telstra Premiership Grand Final, brought to you by Telstra, Tui's New, and Bundaberg Rum. Welcome back to Stadium Australia Grand Final Day. We are watching First Division. The players return for the second half. Parramatta. Down by 20 points to six. They're looking to start the day with a win. And of course, we'll take on the Newcastle Knights later tonight in first grade. Returning to a very healthy crowd spread right around this stadium. Probably be up around 25,000 on what has been a very warm day in Sydney. Shadows now over the ground. And Parramatta Gus with a fair bit of work to do. But the job is already underway, thanks to the inclusion of this bloke, Daniel Irvine, late in that first half. He certainly made a difference. Certainly, but they'll have to turn around these statistics. You can see down the bottom there, it says the possession has been evenly shared, 49 to 51. But the Dragons have certainly done better with it. They've had four line breaks to one. Their kicks in general play are nearly double and have been of better quality. You can see there the missed tackles from Parramatta. And that's usually due to the size and skill of these big St. George Illawarra forwards who have all played a little bit of first grade. And Parramatta have come up with seven errors as well. Mark Coyne said coming up with errors, not getting to their kick. And that's reflected in the match stats there at halftime. Jason Kalis on screen, his brother. Imagine the nerves that he's got at the moment. Nathan Kalis, who will skip a Parramatta later. The trophy they are playing for that was won last year by Canterbury over Penrith. And the Bulldogs came back from quite a sizable second half deficit to come up with a win, as Parramatta have to do here. So we are underway the second 40 minutes. Trindle on the restart. Dragon score after two minutes in the first half. And hell, no penalty straight up. Stapleton is the man tackled short of the 30. With Lee Hookie. Lifted over the top there by Boyd. 
would have been an important half-time talk from both coaches here. For Parramatta, they can't give up. Only one more try, they're back in the game. And for the Dragons too, even though they've got a good lead, they've got to keep concentrating on controlling the football. You should see what Mark Coyne has to say when uh, he gives his half-time address. Justin Smith, one of the co-captains for this St. George Illawarra side. Comes from Narromine, the lock forward. And now 40 metres away from the Parramatta line. Steady set of six to start the second half. And the Dragons have kicked to the corner of Ella all first half. And finally they put one Donald's direction. He covers up with a dive. I think Donald had a quick look up at the referee just to check. I may have dropped that one. And McKinnon's with the ball. A fullback for Parramatta. It's west and then east. This was the take of Donald. And yeah, went straight through the grasp. And he had a quick look up was given the all clear to run. Parramatta 40 metres away from their line. Another touch for McKinnon. Some nice skills there. Donald with it. Now inside the St George Illawarra half. With Trindle. And then turns it back inside and McKinnon. Well, he's come out of the box in the second half. The fullback. Fifth tackle here. Trindle kicking from 25 metres out. Sending Simmons on the chase to the in goal. Reece Simmons gets back to the field of play. Good work by the number one for St George Illawarra. Well, that's a better set there from Parramatta. In the first half, I thought they were in second gear for most of that half. The last five or ten minutes, they started to pick it up. But they need more enthusiasm. We, we heard from Mark Coyne at the start of the game saying, not much talk down there. Parramatta need more than anything is enthusiasm to bring this game back. Well, let's hear from Mark Coyne again as the Dragons bring it back from their own 20. Mark, what did you learn at halftime? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. From the uh, Dragons camp, Brian Johnson, it was a case of steady as she goes. He's very happy with how they're going. Just wants them to keep going forward, play the ball quickly, uh, quickly and for uh, the kicking game to continue as it is. For the Eels, Shane Flanagan, he just wants them to settle down a little bit, to get their composure, wants more ball security and wants field position. If he thinks if they can get that, they can get some points on the board. Kinnan on the kick return. 30 metre line and Ella now out of dummy half. The Eels to play the ball with Ryan. There was no man there and that put the Dragons defence in the position to come up with a tackle. Hookie wasn't able to prevent the offload. And with Irvine. Kalis headed back towards halfway. His last match in Parramatta Colours here. too as you watch this one of these Parramatta players will be on standby for first grade later tonight it will be Robinson or Irvine you would think if not both will go through the warm-up for first grade just in case there's any last minute mishaps as Irvine kicks over the top of Jason Kent and Kent one of the try scorers from the first half back from his own goal line Trindle missed him and Irvine could be still in for some work later today if something unfortunate did happen Simmons, counter pass here from the Dragons, looking to leak up, the chase has come, but so does Simon, Ella's in pursuit, being chased by Wozniak, Simon, champagne ball to Clark, Leo Clark scores the try, that is a perler, scintillating league from the Dragons. And Reece Simmons, he scored a try from fullback, he scored a try as a first receiver halfback, and now from dummy half, find some space straight up the middle of the ruck there of the Parramatta defence and sets in some beautiful football in motion. Mark Simon backs up beautifully on the outside to go and as we freeze it there, what we will see is that Simon is able to attract one, sorry, one, two, three defenders and as play continues, he's able to push it back on the inside and an easy try scored there. Well, what about the 80 metre tries? You just don't score them in a grand final. They'd be ecstatic, the Dragons. But the last section of play was was real top class stuff. And I like the build of this play. Would he? Powerful legs. Leo Clark, very quick too. Scored plenty of tries this year for the Dragons. About 80 metre tries. Top notch. Look, and they're happy. In fact, his 13th try for the year. Leo Clark. Just about every player in the back line has got a, a double figure tally. Goral now from right in front. Close to a match winning lead, even though there is still plenty of time. This will extend the margin to 20 points. They have scored five tries today. 
The Dragons, the minor premiers in first division in control here. 26 points to six over the Parramatta Eels. And Mark Coyne, sideline. I talked to the Eels coach, Shane Flanagan, during the week, Andrew, and he did say that one of his real dangers he was facing today was, was the back three players for the Dragons and how good they were in the first couple of plays. It was Reece Simmons once again on that occasion. He scored two tries. He set that try up again. He's having a wow of a game, Reece Simmons. And what a last pass from Mark Simon. I must give a wrap to the man who just kicked that goal, Aaron Gold. Now, I know we spoke about him a bit already in this game, but he's made 28 tackles. That's phenomenal for me. And also, Justin Smith, the captain's made 22 himself. Great defensive efforts. Thanks, Marty. And now a drop ball here from the Dragons. A little opportunity here for Parramatta. 20 metres out, it was Lee Hookie bringing the ball back. Well, he certainly lost that one after he called help. Creates an opportunity here for Parramatta, who've got Craig Trindle standing at 5'8 off this scrum. And here he is, Trindle. Got a step around Simmons. Nice turn of speed there from the halfback for Parramatta. McKinnon looking to strike back after that first try of the second half from the Dragons. Kidden looks an entirely different player this half. Irvine. Right it comes with Wozniak. Wozniak. Up to the defensive line and then pushed back. Ten metres away from the Dragons line. And his first division season is right on the line now. Trindle. Kalis. That's Jason. Taken low on the tackle by Hookie. Trindle back at dummy half. Ten metres out. Ryan tries the kick. It was off the legs of Smith. Then covered up by the Dragons lock. And the pressure is off St George Illawarra again. Well, Gus, you would think in this first seven to ten minutes of Parramatta, if they're going to turn this game around, it would show more enthusiasm, more desperation. And I think that, uh, again, in attack and defence, it's just not quite there. They like they're in second gear. Big is there from Matt Cooper. They are now out of trouble. And head, headed further downfield with Stapleton. He was spinning and he was looking to pass to Bobbin, who was in support. 40 metres from the Parramatta line. This has been a very impressive set of six here. Fitzgerald tackled. That is five. And 35 away from the line. Goral first receiver. Kicks. He was flattened after kicking there by Irvine. It's fielded by Donald. And the touch judge has come in. And this will be on Irvine who tried to put pressure on the kicker. And the touch judge has come in to report him. This will be a penalty to the Dragons. He was a little late. There was nothing malicious in it. Saw the kick there from Goral and Irvine in over the top. Just letting him know there's going to be pressure on him. A little bit late for the touch judge's liking. Will win his team a penalty, and that's not going to help the Parramatta cause. He had enough time to pull out of that one. The touch judge is 100% right. Nothing illegal, didn't hit him around the head, but certainly late. And because it's a grubber kick, it's where the ball first touched the ground. Irvine penalised. And the opportunity for two points to take the margin out to 22. The kick will come from 30 metres out. Goral's fine after the Irvine challenge. There's no dramas there. I think going back to the point that Paul Harrigan made too, that this eel side are very capable when in possession of the ball, but defensively they've got to aim up a little bit better out around the middle of the ruck. Reece Simmons has found space there after half time, so too has Matt Cooper. They want to reel in their scoreboard, probably 26 or 28 is not beyond them. They can't afford to concede any more points against this Dragon side if they hope to get back into the game and win this grand final. Their defence has got to aim up a little bit more. 20 metres in from touch and 30 metres out. And goal has had a very good game in general play. He loved it off the boot. Judges, flags go up, and another two to the St George Illawarra Dragons Grand Final Day. How are we doing? The mall's back. Excuse me, Mr. Cummings. Would you mind signing us an autograph? Could you make it out to my new mates? <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Could you send it to the bar? I'd like to give a round to his new, to my new mates. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest lead of the match now in this first division grand final. 22 point lead for the Dragons. 
a matter of set out Dallas West and he's playing his last game of rugby league today and he came into this game under a huge injury cloud a calf muscle problem and Stephen Duggan gets ready to go out there for the Dragons forward ball and again the Dragons have made an error on their first set of six following points their pass it just went straight behind Forrester he headed off without it I don't know that it was a knock on looked like a knock back to me but nevertheless, it presents an opportunity for Parramatta. Again, Trindle has moved out into the 5'8 position. Wade McKinnon has moved into the scrum, which means the lock forward Wozniak is out in the back line as well. And maybe a trick shot here from the Eels. Wozniak's with the ball. He's 30 metres from the line. He was looking to link up with Eller. He's going close to that sideline. Hooky had all the momentum there. Tonga, 20 away from the line. Big young centre now inside that 20 metre zone. McKinnon is up at dummy half. They need points desperately here. Robinson, little stutter as he got to the attempted tackle of Goral. Now he's only 10 metres from the line and almost offloading in the Forrester tackle. In front of the Dragons posts. Slow to get back to his feet. Irvine left with Ryan. And a nice inside ball, McKinnon. Looking for try 21 for the year, Wade McKinnon. His reaction says try referee Lawrence agrees. 28 to 10, could this be the huge comeback of the Parramatta Eels? Yeah, good football here by Parramatta, and as we freeze it there, what we'll see is that all these defenders have come across with Ryan, he turns the ball back inside to McKinnon, just with strength able to force his way across the line, but inside assess in defence as play continues, you'll see McKinnon goes through the gap, now is able to wrestle, force his way over the line, and the top try scorer in first division does it again, and hopefully, for his sake, gets Parramatta back in this game. Well, Parramatta starting a bit more feel into this game. McKinnon here, good angle. He ran a good line there, beat the defender coming across in that slide defence. Too strong for the fullback and went over. But you can just see after he scores this try and goes down, that a bit more desperation. They want to win this game. There's a bit of a kerfuffle here between the two of them. That's what it's all about. Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle is a great word. Used in Newcastle all the time. 15 in from touch. As you can see, Trindle will have this kick. to 10. Successful with his first attempt today from adjacent to the uprights. This one is wide, so the margin is 18. Mark Coyne, sideline. Yeah, good little play there by the front row. Yeah, a little inside pass. I think it caught out there, Craig Staples in the big front row. A little bit lazy in defence there on the inside. Beautifully played there, back inside. So great effort there as well for the uh, fullback to get that ball over the line. The Dragons want to be careful that they don't actually keep making these unforced errors. If they do, Craig do have the strike power to put plenty of points on. There was the kerfuffle, as Chief put it, at the end of McKinnon getting the ball down. There's a premiership at, at stake here. This is George Illawarra chasing their first title in the history of the Joint Venture Club. No stranger to success in the lower grades. Their most recent title was 1999. Robinson from the restart. He's played five matches in first grade this year, Chad Robinson. Off to the Roosters next year. Wheeler, the captain, into the 20 metre line. This looks a different Parramatta side after that try. Sullivan, some powerful plays by their big forwards, almost back to the 40 metre line in three tackles. Irvine gets a run at a dummy half now. Gathered in by Bobbin. Trindle. To the right they come, a run around there with Weston. Trindle slides, keeps it going. Tricky Trindle there, that sort of jinking run, never held, last tackle. And the high ball from Ryan, he may find space, Simmons, very cool at the back, getting across to that one. Reece Simmons for the St George Illawarra side has been one of the real stars. He certainly has, best player on the field at this point in time, Simmons, with the ball, and also defensively, and that time a great take over his shoulder. This Parramatta team looking a little better now, their forwards are starting to roll their sleeves up and get over the advantage line. That's not easy, running backwards with the ball coming over your shoulder. Shown a lot of skill today, Simmons. Still, this Parramatta team have got to muscle up a little bit better in defence around the rucks. They've got to keep the Dragons to 28 if they're a hope of winning the game. Half Here's a another loose here ball. As Cooper went back for it for the Dragons, Trindle was getting through at top speed. And all of a sudden, St George Illawarra look a little ragged as they reach the last tackle in this count. And a charge down. 
The ball goes out sideways. Well, there's a bit of luck going wide for Clark. And the tackle count restarts. Well, he could have gone anywhere, Gus. That's unfortunate for Parramatta. Good play ends up a bad play. Nice pressure on the kick, getting a charge down. But wasn't supported by his teammates, and the Dragons come up with another set of six. Again, Irvine, he was just penalised a moment ago on Goral. That time Goral heard him coming. He was able to get a result out of it with a charge down. Dragons back-to-back -back sets of six when they needed it most as Donnelly crashes forward for another five metres. Now right with Simon. Short pass there for Bobbin. The Wollongong Juniors there, 25 metres away from the line. Now the kick over the top from Simon to the end goal. It will go dead. And Parramatta will march it back to the 20. That looks like Irvine's coming from the field here. Simon down the short side puts a, a little kick in, hoping to wade it into the end goal, but it goes too far. I think if the Parramatta Reels are going to trouble the scorer here, down the back end of this game. They've really got a group around the likes of Trindle and McKinnon around the edges of the ruck. They're the ones most likely to, to step through and get a ball away. The forwards have got to get them into good position, keep going forward, control the ball, and back up Trindle, back up McKinnon. Well, Gus, it looks like the forwards are starting to get a little bit fair and even go forward now. That's going to be the difference. Uh, Paul Del Santo is back out there as a dummy half, and Sullivan, as he started the game, He's making plenty of ground on every hit-up. Del Santo, infield there for Trindle. Back to where they played it for Del Santo, the hooker. He gets a kick in, found a little gap there, and sits up nicely for Simmons. And he has collected five bitters out from his own line, but he hasn't put a foot wrong today, the man at the back for the Dragons. Duggan gets back for a hit-up. This is George Illawarra. Leads away to Kent. The Dragons, their coach Brian Johnson. It's his last match today. If the Dragons get a penalty, he's actually off to the AIS next year to take up the rugby league program down there. It will be a first for the game, and Brian Johnson getting the nod as the man to head that charge. And Wozniak will be disappointed in this penalty. They had good pressure on the Dragons. When you're giving away penalties and behind on the scoreboard, it eats into your time. There's only 23 minutes left on the clock here. You can't afford penalties against you, giving the opposition an opportunity to wear down the clock. the hit up. Dragons on their 40 metre line, leading by 18 points. And it's going to be 22 after half time. Led 20 nil early in the first half. Ball with Geddes. Headlong there into Sullivan. Goral looks left. Head along by Donnelly. Now they go out wide with Simmons. And a leaping Cooper on receiving that pass. Inside Parramatta's 40 now. Duggan, another straight charge. Pretty easy to, to work out his tactics or his game plan since he came on. Very straight running. Goral on tackle number five. The hooker got through the attempted tackle of Del Santo. Not much to the kick. McKinnon goes across field. Links up now with Ella. He will take on the man take on the sideline. Ella over the 30 metre line himself there around Clark. McKinnon for Ryan. Crossfield. Now straightens. To get through some fragile looking Dragons defence. It's the Dragons who concede the penalty. Look, there's still plenty of time here. They're not out of this, Parramatta. They're certainly not. And they're an entertaining football team too when they start to unload the ball and everyone wants to attack holes. Now they know that they have to score 18 points get back on level terms, they're starting to chance their arm, good play by McKinnon and Ella at the back all that sort of stuff is inspiring to a football team Kalis, some quick hands, it's been along from Wheeler, then for Ryan Sullivan was going inside, outside ball for Ella, he's 20 metres from the line got through the tackle of Geddes most entertaining from the blue and golds Halpenny, infield with McKinnon, a jump and then back for Kalis 9 metres away from the line they are extended to the right. They come to the short side with Sullivan. Sullivan bumps into the back of his own teammate, Halpenny. And held up five metres away. Ella is in the dummy half. And along with Ryan, he paused before passing. Had to get himself settled for McKinnon. Just anywhere ball for McKinnon. Keep it alive. Del Santo goes back for it. Del Santo, 15 metres from the line. Then with Jason Kalis. 
There's a little gap there. It's now with Halpenny. And he is held up and has lost the ball, Colin Halpenny. Play on for the Dragons. We're starting to see some of the potential that Parramatta do have to up the ante there in attack. But I've got to say, good defensive effort from the Dragons. They really held their own. Very calm and cool. No one went out of the line. And that's what they need to hang on to their lead. And it indicates the desperation in the Parramatta side. Throwing balls out the back. Hal Penny was held, tried to get the ball away. Could have been called a strip, but I think the referee was right there. He was trying to make the ball available to pass. I think we're in for an exciting finish to this game in that Parramatta are going to chance their arm now and see some entertaining football. Well, they must. If, if the Dragons score one more try, the game's pretty well over. So they're on edge defensively. They've got to be top-notch, but at the same time, they've got to score those tries. Andrew Needs will play it on the 40 for the Dragons. Duggan finds himself a dummy half on the last and has to get a kick in. It'll be the first of his career down the throat of McKinnon. And now we've got a touch touch in again. Number 10 for power, please. Well, this isn't sounding too good. Adam Wheeler's going to be called out. Nothing to do with you. Marty, can you get him? And Adam Wheeler had, in fact, gone to the sideline. Well, there's nothing in that. There is absolutely nothing in that. Adam Wheeler has since gone to the sideline. He's been called back onto the field. And now that the touch judge is on, there's going to be a penalty out of this, Gus. Oh, I hope not. Well, that is totally ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's the same touch judge that came in previously on one where I believe he was right, but this one is totally wrong. Adam Wheeler at markup out quickly to put some pressure on the kicker who was a dummy half well he is the captain he's had to run 50 meters to come back on the field for this and there's nothing in it the forearm into the face is the call from the touch judge that's a pretty serious uh, charge from the the linesman well, i don't think they're referring to this tackle actually i think it's the previous tackle and the linesman has played advantage and then come in and penalised one tackle later. He couldn't possibly have been penalised for his attempted tackle on the kicker. I believe the linesman is referring to a tackle previous to that. You're 100% right because they've given the penalty on the 40 metre line. So if it had been for the late challenge, it would have been where the ball landed from the kick. So we will hold up on any criticism of the touch judge. He has detected something. Duggan with a hit up. Here it was, the... The run back. And Wheeler comes over the top. He's the number 10. He's the man in question, the Parramatta front rower. And it's his left forearm that obviously was the one that's that's incurred the infringement. OK, we'll give the linesman the benefit of the doubt yeah. there. It obviously couldn't have been for the charge down, but uh, he was right. He played advantage. And uh, looking at that could well be worth a penalty. And the Dragons with it 25 metres away. It is 28 points to 10. And now left there as the Parramatta defence more or less just stood back and watched there. There was no one coming up off the line. Goral, 15 metres out, looking to get that kick through. Capable ricochet. Eels are back in possession. Well, he might have been lining up for a field goal there. They're 18 points in front. 19 is a big advantage. He was right in front of the sticks but decided against it. Put a little grubber kick in to keep the pressure on. And that's where they want Parramatta to be if they're going to chance their arm. If, if the Eels are going to throw loose passes and try to get things started. You want them to do it from their own end of the field. Now Here's Ella. This is Ella. Scott Ella up to halfway and takes on the fullback Simmons. I thought he may have tried to step him. He tried to go straight over the top. He thought he was 16 stone. Now the ball is with Trindle. Kicks and it's come off the back of Wade McKinnon into the arms of Matt Cooper. Well, that was a bit of a disaster the end of that cheek. That was unfortunate because if that cleared the, over the top of his head, there was three or four great chases, a, a very good chance for try there. Just see now Young Ella, I tell you what, he's got a lot of skill and just sheer speed. That's a dynamic turn of pace there on Garrell and got away. And like Bossy said, didn't worry about doing the side step a little bit later on. Took it straight on, head on with the defender. Bang, there you go. Quick play of the ball though, set his team up. Dragons just inside Parramatta territory. And a strong charge there from Donnelly. And the offload against the tiring Parramatta defence as Hookie gets a run now. Lee Hookie. Proven a real handful. Last tackle here for the Dragons. They go blindside on the last with Fitzgerald. His kick, another ricochet off the legs of Hal Penny. And Ryan dies on the loose ball. But again, Parramatta have to start a set of six inside their own 10-metre line. 
Yeah, they're playing the percentage game now. The Dragons controlling the ball for five, putting a good kick in, giving the ball to Parramatta where they want them to have it. Parramatta have to start their set of six from deep in their own territory. And chance their arm. Parramatta need a little bit of incentive here. They need something to happen for them. A penalty, maybe a free try, just to get their enthusiasm level up again. A little bit of reward for the effort that they've shown so far in this half. Got them back over the 40 metre line. Dalcento running it to Marcus who are offside. Then turned it inside to Ella. Parramatta were appealing for a penalty for offside. Instead, it'll be a scrum feed for the Dragons. Yeah, that was unfortunate because it was a forced pass. A lot of traffic there. The man was offside. So he just pushed into the way. But it had an effect on the pass here. Like, he was still offside, that man there. I think it was Garrell. No, so, and that had an effect on it. So unfortunate there, the momentum broken again for Parramatta. Five tries to two. Nine six the handling errors. Right on halfway. Mark Simon passing up the leads. You can see if a message goes out from the uh, Brian Johnson, the St George Illawarra coach, to maybe look for the field goal. 18 points in front. 19, I think, would close this out definitely. They've been in good position to do it on the previous two sets of six and haven't gone for it. Kicked only one field goal all year, this Dragon side in first division. It probably hasn't been too much need for it, to be quite honest. They're with the ball 30 metres out. They've had such a great run. They've lost only five games all year. This time a turnover. Parramatta back with the ball. The bloke who kicked the field goal in first division was Ben Jeffries, who went on to play with the West Tigers. Parramatta come back almost to halfway. Brian Johnson. And a walkie talkie. They're probably not good at field goals anyway. We saw that last week in the final. They had four or five shots. And well, they couldn't get it between four. the posts. I think they had four as well. Had to score a try to win. Colin Halpenny inside the 30. He'll be playing with Halifax next year in the British Super League. Ella gets out a dummy half. Inside the St George Illawarra 20. Dal Santo went to the blind and there was no one there. Robinson has to go back the open side with Ryan and now for Trindle. Men lined up on his outside. Trindle decides to come back in field. Still with the ball. Trindle, a risky pass at the finish. And St George Illawarra kill the football with Aaron Gorrell. He still looks the player most likely, Trindle. He's got a good, strong right foot step. They should get the support players around him inside and out. Probably had an opportunity to send the ball to the outside. But he does back his own ability. He's got great confidence and for a little man, very, very strong. Just here, tries to get a ball back on the inside to a support as he's falling. Couldn't roll it out the fingertips well enough. And the coach, not happy, he saw that as an opportunity to get back in the game. He's lived this match. The coach, Shane Flanagan, for Parramatta. Few times we've given you shots in the box. He's he certainly hasn't been one of him smiling yet. Inside the 40s and George Illawarra kick. It is over the sideline on the fall. Well, this a, is a changeover inside the 40. It's a very basic set of six. You can tell obviously the Dragons just want to conserve conserve what they've got, but it's not good enough. You've got to play out a grand final. At the end of that set of six, it was a poor play the ball. A lot of pressure put on the kicker. He's kicked it out. No matter. They're away now on attack. Now Santo, long ball from dummy half for Trindle. Holds it up and brings Sullivan around the back. Sullivan has tackled 20 metres from the line. A trail by 18 points. 28 to 10, Trindle for Robinson, flat-footed, looking to pass out the back. And rather meekly submitting to the tackle of Stapleton. Trindle to the right with Wozniak. Long ball from Wozniak for Donald and says, do your best, Scott. And Donald tries to do that to the kick. Simmons covers it up. Oh, got a little hand around the corner, almost a four-pointer. Yeah, he got a check in running too, Scott Donald. Back to his ability here. Well played by Reese Simmons at the back. He got a check in running there. Simmons allows the ball, she shepherds it so he can get to the end goal. And Donald tried to get his hands around the back of the legs and get it down. Well done by both players. Good competition there. Bottom line, it is a 20-meter restart for St George Illawarra and an opportunity to soak up more time. 12 remaining. They had won their last nine matches heading into today. St George Illawarra, the minor premiers. I've got to give this man a wrap to Stephen Duggan. He's, he has been a fresh reserve. Since he's come on, he's done his job. He's just gone forward, forward hard. You've said that before, Vossi, but tradesman job for a uh, reserve to come on in that position. Fitzgerald offloading there, put down by that man. Well, that's just wonderful, isn't it? A little bit of a wrap there. 
There's the bench of the Dragons. They'll be very happy at the moment, just taking their time. Ah, uh, welcome to the team, Chief. Thank you very much. Oh, it was a tough ball. Yeah, no, geez. I switched straight to his chest. <laughs> uh, it's bad luck. There's no doubt the Dragons, though, are playing and looking at the clock. 18 points in front, 11 minutes left on the clock. Probably guilty of just trying to play out time and conserve themselves. The Eels with it all to do. McKinnon, their fullback. Started this second half on fire. Some of the wounds of the battle. But you'll feel no pain in around about 11 minutes if the Dragons take the title. Uh, he'll just love that. A bit of blood on the forehead. Win the grand final. That's what it's all about. And back with Robinson. 30 metres from the St. George Illawarra line. And now Irvine, his second appearance in this match. Trindle holds it out, right out on the fingertips, in fact. Rolled it up his arm. 25 metres away from the St. George Illawarra line. Wozniak fires this ball back for Ryan. Keeps it going for Kalis. Kalis with a step to the 20 metre line. Last tackle. Parramatta. Not a bit too much pressure on him, but they need to score on this play. Ball comes with Irvine. Kicks it back across field. Ella's not quick enough to get through on that one. Clark has covered it up. It'll be a 20 metre restart for St. George Illawarra. Uh, kick a little bit too deep, not high enough, not enough hang time there for the support runners to get through. There was good communication, the ball went to one side of the ruck and kicked back to the left. See the Parramatta chasers keen to get through and do a job. But basically the ball too deep and not high enough. Didn't allow them enough time and as we get under 10 minutes to go in this clash, George Illawarra Dragons heading towards a victory in first division. And I guess for St George Illawarra support as a sign of things to come. Losing a lot of senior players from their top squad this year. A lot of these young fellas will go into next season, hopefully with a first division medal in their pocket, the confidence ready to step up for the big time. Cooper. He is one of those players. In fact, week one of the finals, he was playing first grade. Scored two tries against the Bulldogs at the showground. He's had a few problems with injury this year. But he's another bloke who's been re-signed for three years. He'll definitely be there in the first grade squad. Laurel kicks on the last here for the Dragons. Here's some pressure on Donald. Donald makes the leap, doesn't come down with the ball. There's Chiefs man Duggan. Kicks the ball alive for Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald launches himself for the try line. Now you can celebrate. The Dragons are home in the first division decider. It is 32 to 10. Yeah, good kick here from Goal. He's had a fine game for the Dragons. Ball high in the air. Plenty of support runners coming through. And the key to this is that once the ball comes back, there's plenty of white jerseys back on the inside. An experience and strength here from Jamie Fitzgerald. As we said earlier, off to the Rabbitohs next year. Played plenty of first grade this season. And he scores the try that will finalise this first division grand final and see it go the way of the St George Illawarra Dragons. Yeah, you did right, Gus. That try has wrapped up the grand final there for the Dragons. They're a gutsy team. I was impressed with them last week, the way they dug in. And tonight, or sorry, today... When they were in front there, they really battened down the hatches, played a, a real traditional style of football, backed themselves in, rewarded with a great try there. And I've got to say, there's a coach. They've been well drilled. Every part of their game, every aspect is, uh, is top notch, so he'd be very happy with the kick that come right now. More relief than jubilation there from Brian Johnson. I don't think he's been prepared to say his team is home over the last 10, 15 minutes. It was just relief to see Fitzgerald go across the line. Goal gets another kick from close range. They have scored six tries, the Dragons. This for his fifth goal. And Goral successful. It looks impressive. 34 to 10, the Dragons over the Eels. Try one at a time. <laughs> St. George Illawarra. They will cruise home from here, leading by 24 points. And he's convincing. Six tries to two. Mark Simon, another kid 
who has been with his club for a long time. He was a ball boy at age 11 for the Illawarra Steelers. Here he is about to collect a medal. And for Parramatta fans, it might seem like a disappointing start to the day. But the minor premiers of this first division competition have gone on to win. I'm quite sure they'd be happy if that was the case later on tonight in the big well, one. I'm not too sure about that one, but uh, they have won nine in a row, the Dragons. They've been in great form. <laughs> so Brian Smith has had it loaded up, whatever the result here. The minor premiers win, that's fantastic. If Parramatta win, that's great. There's now a turnover. And a late call there. We'll probably go against the Dragons. They came up with a ball. Cooper was happy to run away with it. Parramatta will get the scrum feed. He's probed all day, Trindle. He's a clever little player. He's hitting a solid tackle there. Loses the ball out the back. The man who picks it up for the Dragons or tries to, Cooper, who knocks it on. He's a solid player, Matt Cooper. He will play first grade for the Dragons next year, and I think for a long time. Just looks like a footballer. Moves like one. Parramatta, Trindle, another little dart out of the scrum base but it's all gone with the hopes they had before the game now Dash, Dennis Fitzgerald, the chief executive reflects that and it is Sullivan has lost the ball in the tackle, McKinnon not able to force it, play on with the Dragons with Simmons, no real advantage getting the ball 20 metres downfield the referee agrees there, he's going to pack a scrum where the first infringement took place and it's just winding down now Georgia Lawara will be waiting for this full-time siren to have what they've been waiting for all week and that's a, a victory lap for Parramatta. The emotion and the build-up will be starting to turn to disappointment and that empty feeling that goes with losing a grand final after emotionally you put so much into the preparation. Yeah, so I was just watching the, uh, the Dragon forwards lining up for that scrum. It must be a nice feeling with four or five minutes to go knowing that you're going to win a grand final a lead of 34 points to 10. Just taking your time, just enjoying the moment, savoring the moment as they work up towards the try line. Wise Cataverada is the number 21 out there for the Dragons. We saw him only once in first grade this year. Fitzgerald passes put down there by Hooky. Another try, and that really would be the icing on the cake for the St. George Illawarra side. Yeah, the game's got sloppy once the intensity's gone, once the result's been known. Both sides guilty of turning the ball over. Hooky having a look at Ella. He's played pretty good, Ella. He's not a big man, but he's certainly quick and he's willing. Four minutes left on the clock now in the first division grand final. The first premiership of the day has been decided. McKinnon with the ball for Parramatta. Ryan Johnson's ready already to come down to the bench. That's his first smile as now Sergeant who scored the Parramatta try before half time. And the run of the, the coaches of the first division sides over the last Four or five years has been quite fantastic in the first grade. Terry Lamb last year, Daniel Anderson in 99. You go back to 97 in the twin comp year, we had Peter Sharp successful at Parramatta and Steve Folks successful at the Bulldogs, both coaching in first grade now. I think I'm right in saying that Brian Johnson actually spent some time at Parramatta as a, a lower grade assistant coach too, a couple of seasons ago before moving on to this appointment at the Dragons, which of course is a former club of Brian Smith. Here's a chance for Parramatta to put points on the board late, Ella. Off a lovely ball from Colum Halpenny, he called the last pass forward. Rod Lawrence, Ella is disgusted with that. Denied a late try in the grand final. Yeah, good little kick, chip kick here from Trindle. Halpenny read it well. Popped it out the back. Gee, where's harsh call, I think. It would have been a nice reward for Ella, who's had a, a tidy game. But the referee was right on the spot, called it forward. They don't come cheap tries in big games. I like uh, Ella's attitude there, even though the game's gone, still desperate, still wanting to score tries. And into the ball again, I don't think there'll be anything too flash about this. Wise Cataverata, that's another touch. Celebrations already for, for Forrester and Leo Clark on the bench. Craig Stapleton offloading, I said nothing flash, look what they do, it's fielded there by Donnelly. Anyway, mate, happens to the very best. Simmons. Left Duggan gets another charge. He's lost it. <laughs> There's his second drop ball. Parramatta on halfway. And then Irvine. Zero tackle for Parramatta. As Del Santo goes almost right through the centre. 
inside the final two now. Ryan gets a bad ball at his back. Tim Ryan, Jason Kalis, their brothers playing in first grade tonight. Looking for a better result. Jason Kalis on cue, comes up with the ball. It's inside that Dragons 30. And Duggan is over the top in defence. Now Santo with Trindle. Looks left and then right with Wozniak. Able to keep it alive, but around the back of Donald. And Donald is over the sideline. Suddenly bodies strewn everywhere for Parramatta. And the referee ruling here that there was an infringement by the Dragons before the ball went out over the sideline. Wozniak will try and get a Matt Gidley pass away on the outside. Just touched by that St George Illawarra player. Kent, who knocks the ball back, it's picked up by Donald. He's bustled into touch by, Tent, by Kent, sorry, who kept himself alive. But the original infringement is against the Dragons. And Parramatta will have the feed. And should have the last set of six for the match. And straight from the scrum base, Dallas Weston in his last game almost getting away. Wozniak, five minutes from the line. And Neal's looking for some joy right at the finish. Del Santo a dummy half, but we know Golden Point extra time this week. Sargent passes back, intercept for the Dragons. And now they will get the opportunity to play out time. Bench is all up. Bobbin gets in a dummy half. And the final 10 seconds for the first division season. And run for the fullback Simmons, who is the official man of the match. And there it is for St. George Illawarra. A grand final day, 2001. And a moment in the club's history, their first title for the joint venture club. They could have had a first grade title in 1999. They've got one here at Stadium Australia in 2001. And a decisive win at that, six tries to two. They led 20 points to nil at one stage in the first half. And they have run out winners by 34 points to 10. Dallas Weston on screen has played his last game. In the first grade back in 1993, Shane Flanagan, the defeated coach for Parramatta. But it is a game where the minor premiers emerge as winners. Losing only five games all year. Losing only two games from round five on. And winning nine straight going into the grand final. I don't think you can ask for much more than that, Bill Gould. Now, good performance by the Dragons. Lovely to win a premiership of any type. These young fellas will remember this for a long time. And even some of the senior players who may be moving on. But you've got to remember, last week they had to go to extra time to defeat the Knights to actually get into this game. And there'll be plenty of young Knights sitting at home looking at this scoreboard here. George Illawarra 34, Parramatta 10, thinking if only we could have been the one through to the grand final. Maybe there was a premiership flag for us. We saw Brian Johnson, Jason Kalis with Denny Sullivan there. But Brian Johnson, our congratulations to the coach. His last game at the helm of the Dragons first division side. We're going to see plenty more scenes like this later today. Jersey flag in first grade to come. Plenty more to come your way on the Wide World of Sports Grand Final Day. The first one is over. Dragons 34, Parramatta 10. Don't go away. Monday on a current affair. Today is Canyon Day. The lethal craze hooking our kids. At train stations, bus stops, you can see the kids actually doing it. I'm going to rip my bag. Up to one third have tried it. Give me a buzz. Got to have fits everywhere. But most parents don't even know it's happening. Kids from as young as 12 and 13. Plus the reward system slashing petrol bills. Every week we're saving money. It's great to get something back. And tests that take the pain out of women's shoes. How high is too high? When Nissan presents a current affair. Oh, Bill. See you soon, mate. No, Bill.